Immigrant Integration Champions. How are you doing? Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you so much to NPNA. Thank you, Rich, for your leadership for so long and for taking over One America and making it stronger than ever. And to all of you in this room, thank you for being the front lines of our movement, of our defense, of our advancement for progress. You are incredible. And especially because I know what it takes to put on a conference like this. We fought to have this very conference in Seattle in 2011, and it is a heck of a lot of hard work. So let's give it up for the Tennessee Immigrant Rights Coalition for putting this on. And I also want to thank Congressman G uh, Jim Cooper. I'm really looking forward to serving with him in this Congress and so honored to be with my old friend and new colleague, the champion for so many people across this country, Congressman Luis Gutierrez. So it really is incredible to be here. And like you, and like you heard from Rich, I come from the movement, our movement for immigrant rights and for immigrant integration. And I have been out there on the streets with so many of you fighting for justice and equality and comprehensive immigration reform and immigrant integration. And so proud not only to have founded One America, but also with Josh and Ava and, and Julian, and I'm gonna miss Petra and so many others in the, this room to see the need for the National Partnership for New Americans. We can't remember when we founded it. We think it was somewhere around 2008, 2009. Um, but what we knew is that we needed a movement and a coalition that would really bring together groups on the issues of how we get immigrants to have all of the tools and resources and skills that they need so that they can contribute their full selves to this country. And so thank you, Josh, for being the executive director now and continuing to build NPNA into a powerful movement. And I'm proud that in Washington state, I just got to brag about my state a little bit, we are one of the only states in the country to pre preserve driver's licenses for everyone. I'm proud at One America to have passed the Washington New Americans uh, executive order at our state level that established Immigrant Integration Council that helped move citizenship for people across the country, one of the priorities for NPNA. Proud to have made sure that we advanced English learning and innovation, and now that's a national initiative. And also to have established the Office of Immigrant and Refugee Affairs at the city of Seattle. Shout out to Seattle and to the 7th Congressional District. So together, we in this room have moved forward the idea of immigrant integration and we have helped organize tens of thousands of people across our country to take on some of the most important challenges of our time. And so yes, I am proud to have gone from handcuffs to elected office, to have led some of the most important civil disobedience uh, uh, movements of our, of our time. But specifically, I wanna give a shout out to We Belong Together, all my mujeres out there. Because that was an amazing opportunity for 100 women, including 27 undocumented women, to take their courage and resilience to the streets of Capitol Hill and to take arrests in civil disobedience for the cause of immigration reform. So that is the history that I come from. And that is the, what I intend to take with me to the United States Congress as I become the next Congresswoman for the 7th Congressional District and the first South Asian American woman ever elected to the House of Representatives. So I ran for office because I really believe that we need more people like us, more champions like Luis Gutierrez in every level of elected office. Because as organizers, we cannot afford to cede that very important ground of political space 
in elected office. And so it is important for us to be organizing both on the outside and on the inside and making sure that we help people participate in democracy and be inspired by the fact that there are more of us that represent our communities across the country. And so especially now, the success of immigrant integration and the success of policy change that we seek depends on local, state, and federal organizing. And it depends on having a government that can bring those voices to the table. And I want to say something. This is not just about the color of our skin. It's not just about what we look like in a picture. It's about the fact that we as immigrants, as women, as people of color, as activists from the movement, have experiences, life experiences that shape us. And those experiences change the way that we in elected office listen to testimony, chair hearings, develop legislation, and bring important issues to the table. And so that is why it is so important that we elected Ilhan Omar from Minnesota to the state legislature. That is why it is so important that we elected Kamala Harris to the United States Senate and Catherine Cortez Masto in Nevada. So our personal and our movement experiences help us to be fearless and to fight even when it seems tough because you all know what tough means. I know this as an activist and an immigrant. As Rich said, I came to this country when I was 16 years old by myself. My parents had about $5,000 in their bank account, and they used all of it to send me to the United States by myself because they believed that this was the place I would get the best education. And because of that experience, I've been on the front lines fighting for raising the minimum wage. In Seattle, we raised it to $15 fighting for marriage equality, and fighting against the Bush administration after 9-11, taking on the Bush administration, and stopping the deportation of over 4,000 Somali Americans and Muslims across this country. That is what we know how to do. So don't forget in this really difficult time that people in this room did help to pass that bill in the United States Senate for comprehensive immigration reform with 67 bipartisan votes. Don't forget that when we were so devastated by the failure of the DREAM Act in Congress that we came right back with the leadership of our incredible, courageous young people across this country and with NPNA and FIRM and we stood up and organized for DACA and for DAPA and for prosecutorial discretion. So when I say that we can win, again, we have to believe that we can win because this is what we do. And I know it's hard to have a president that keeps announcing things through 140 characters on Twitter and that has appointed, a, a potentially appointing a cabinet with people that are going to have a combined wealth of over $15 billion. That is part of what we are going to have to fight. But don't forget this. Mahatma Gandhi said, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, and then you win. Right? So I think our work now is the work of resistance and remembering that the work of resistance is the work of revival. When we resist, we are stronger, we understand what we stand for, we bring our power together, and we become not protesters, but in the words of the Standing Rock Sioux, we become protectors. So I can't wait to go to the United States Congress with Congressman Luis Gutierrez, with so many of you at my side, and to remember that if we are going to be an army for immigrants, we are going to be a love army for immigrants. We are going to be an army of solidarity, of bringing each other together, because I am not a woman on Monday, an immigrant on Tuesday, a mom on Wednesday, and a worker on Thursday. I am all of those things all of the time, and we together will fight, brothers and sisters, with love and generosity. Thank you.